So yeah, just, just like Nick said, thanks for inviting me to this talk. Um, really inspiring to see so many people that are either involved in outdoor education, learning with the environment, or want to get involved in that. Um, so it feels like this is a moment that as a group of educators or whatever you identify as, um, we're at the sort of start of this revolution um, where we're encouraging outdoor education um, in all these sort of formats. So um, I really think we're at the, at the sort of start of something special. Um, so but my name is Alex and I am a Green Mentor Project Manager. Um, and I'm hosted by a charity called SOS UK. And this is a national charity. It's a strand of um, NUS, the National Union of Students. And they do fantastic work, largely in the undergrad community. Um, where they're working on projects like Banking with Who and sort of investigating where your bank's investing your money and greening yeah, campuses. They're working on um, hedgehog-friendly campuses at the moment. But the project that I'm working on is uh, called the Green Influences Scheme. And it's slightly different in that uh, you can see my, uh, my, my, my screen all right, yeah? You can hear me good? Yeah, we can see the Oh, that's What's that? That's perfect. Is that good? Yeah. All right, nice one. Um, so this is this is slightly different. It's focused on ages ten to fourteen, and the reason for this is uh, a study showed that at that point, that transition between primary to secondary, you start to lose your nature connectedness for whatever reason. It becomes less a part of your life. You find that often if you work in um, secondary schools compared to primary schools, they're less likely to have equipment for working on allotments, community gardens, they are less likely to spend that more um, sort of recreational time outdoors. So we're really intercepting at that moment. And just like Nick was talking about progression, we're interested in how do we keep this connection happening all throughout your life, this lifelong learning. And this project is really focusing on that period. Um, so this Green Influencer Scheme is funded by the Ernest Cook Trust and it's a charity that they own various plots of land around the UK and they're interested in connecting young people with nature so that's that's the project that I'm involved in. Um, so I'm gonna over the next sort of 10-15 I'm gonna give you some I hope really practical examples of the sort of activities and projects that you can do with young people and um, a lot of these or at least the initial ones are activities that you can do in a classroom that don't require you to go outside or make a trip or rent a mini bus. So hopefully, hopefully these are useful and um, give you some sort of case studies, of some of the projects I'm, that I'm uh, delivering with these, uh, with these groups around Norfolk. So the whole purpose um, in a sort of similar way to Generation Green of this activity is to address in a local manageable way the climate crisis and to confront it and understand what it means on a local level and to find really practical measures where we can counter the effects of regional particulate matter pollution and habitat decline and encouraging sustainable lifestyles. So at the heart of all of these projects, we're addressing the climate crisis. And we make that really clear and we understand, we try and pick apart the terms at the beginning because for anyone, it's this sort of um, impossible scale to deal with. Even like a large road that's built in Norfolk seems like a big scale, but even in the scheme of things, that's quite small comparatively. So um, this is hyper-localized and it's community driven. And we pick apart these terms and find a way that hopefully um, uh, they can yeah, they can, they can sort of relate and process these um, more personally. Um, so I'm an artist myself, and one way in which to encounter nature and to experience it is through land art using forage materials. And what's really great about this is that sort of no matter where you are, you'll probably never depending where you are in Norfolk, you know, there's probably a, there's probably a park 10 minutes away or there's probably, a, you know, some sort of um, green patch, which no doubt is going to have a sort of scattering of uh, leaves and sticks on the floor. And right there, you've got a resource for um, 
You're right. Yeah, sorry. Um, right there, you've got resource for um, for a craft. And um, what we're um, doing here, this sort of ambiguous uh, assemblage of, of leaves um, with a uh, with the Sea Scouts, they wanted to do an activity about um, about faith and religion, and um, I showed them pilgrim badges of which Norwich Castle has a great collection. And then using leaves and sticks, they made their own pilgrim badge. So I think this is a good example of the intersectionality of using a nature-based activity that can intersect with other subjects. So learning about pilgrim badges, but the focus here was, all right, what do we care about outside in the natural environment? That could be your faith, your, um, your pilgrimage. And what I'm particularly fond of is mud painting. So, um, of course, this is uh, fairly, um, fairly easy to gather, especially on a wet day. So you just fill a mud up with, sorry, you fill a bucket up with mud, essentially. And um, here they were using sticks, but of course it naturally descends into hand printing and body painting, etc. So you've got this sort of really tactile material that um, what can be so lovely is at the start, there's a reluctance to plunge your hand into a bucket, which is entirely a bucket of mud, which is entirely normal. But um, gradually you begin to normalize this interaction with materials that I think we've like as a, as a sort of urbanized community internalized that these are potentially dangerous, that there's all sorts of poisonous matter involved, but this is making this accessible and something that um, you, um, you can confront and engage with and um, make, a, make a sort of part of your life. Of course, what is also fun about bringing the bucket of sticks and leaves into the classroom is you always bring a few bugs in naturally. And uh, so you end up trying to sort of save as many and that just becomes part of the feature watching the little crawlies go along the desks. Um, silhouettes are, uh, are a nice activity inspired by a Chilean artist called Ana Mendi Yata and they would create silhouettes of their bodies using um, forage materials. So it's a nice way of sort of stating your presence and making a self-portrait. Again, these are intersecting with another subject, art history and self-expression. And also this can be done um, in, a, in a classroom space or outdoors. Um, I was recently at, a, this was actually a conference with Green Mentors and they showed us a, um, well, we did willow weaving, which um, yeah, you might have done before. This was a very experimental piece. It ended up being a sort of fly swap and, um, uh, Willow is um, fairly, fairly. I mean, I, there's some trees actually. I've got a studio and um, just in Tombland in Norwich, and there's a load of willow trees where the, yeah, essentially the ground is sort of strewn with branches, and it's um, of course very flexible material. And then you've got material that you can return back to the landscape. So the very practice itself demonstrates and encourages a um, sustainable approach to making. And as well as taking natural material, there's also great potential to blend that with digital media. So what we're using here is a tablet. And um, this, is a, this is a school in Deerham that um, I was working with. And there's, a, there's an app called Stop Motion Animation. Um, and it does what it says on the tin and it's very accessible to use you take a series of photos and it automatically spins it out into a um into an animation and um here they were so our project um our sort of green influencer project with this uh with this group is um all about trees and we we're learning about the life cycle so we're animating the uh, life cycle of a tree we've almost finished that but this is gonna be sent out via the newsletter we're gonna set up a little um in the school and uh, share it during assembly. So using digital media, I think it's one way to sort of preserve it for posterity, um, but it's also a um, sort of means that they might be very familiar with. You know, um, you don't necessarily need a tablet or a SLR camera. You, you'll probably find most of the young people have a, um, have a phone in their pocket. So, or at least they're quite familiar with using some of those apps. So, 
as far as possible, I think these can be really extended and enriched by um, combining digital media with the with the activity. Um, and this was um, Nick mentioned. I'm doing a we're doing a project with Great Yarmouth Scouts. And, um, these are actually just foraged from outside the Asda, which is the Broads, and uh, there are a load of sort of reeds and yeah hollow ho hollow reeds and branches. And um, yeah, here they were. They made this sort of wonderful wonderful animation. Um, well, this is, this is a video, but uh, it um, that sort of animated the frost in the glass or the condensation. And also with Dirham, this is uh, Ben, who works at the Environmental Hub in um, Gresson Hall Museum, which is a new initiative. They're just, they're just starting it up, but essentially this is going to be the environmental hub for the county and they're really pushing the one million trees for Norfolk initiative and they're planting a um, a tree nursery so Ben's brought a sapling here and as well as the animation with this group they are really uh, renovating the entire scale and plot of land of their school here so this is this is a wonderfully ambitious um, I guess landscape design that we've we've really had the approval um, from senior staff and um, from uh, from sort of partners involved to push ahead with this. So um, there's going to be um, there's going to be an orchard. This was really inspired by the uh, National Trust released a um, piece of research recently that said. Um, the UK has lost sort of 85% of its orchards and um, areas like sort of Norfolk have been uh, particularly badly hit. And Deerham was once called the Garden of Norfolk and it no longer has that, that title anymore. But um, this, is our, this is our small sort of step to um, reignite that. And um, all these ideas were, they came from the group and our approach to engaging them with with nature and the outdoors is that we'll provide a sort of stable platform that will scaffold their ideas and then over the course of the project we nurture the confidence for them to begin to lead so they came up with these ideas they'll design where they go how we do them how long it takes what's practical what's feasible and we also have um for each group 360 quid for them to manage so we asked them how they'd like to spend it how they manage that um that budget so uh practically speaking over the summer volunteers from gresson hall and volunteers that i've recruited we're going to go into the school outside of time the kids are going to come and visit us every now and again and we're going to put this in place so that when they um when they return there'll be uh, some additional green spaces that's also with them um, have aspects like mindfulness in mind that's going to be a sort of mindfulness garden and uh, we're going to set up an uh, allotment and community garden committee amongst the school to ensure for that legacy and um, as well as using the natural materials you can create this sort of great blend of recycled packaging which is also everyone has it to hand everyone's got a bin full of um, you know plastics and crisp packets and cardboard and if you ask everyone to bring a bit in you soon surmount a huge pile um, of waste so these were um, anti-littering posters that we're going to put up on a little community artboard in our garden and just just finally as well as the um the land art aspect which is sort of a immediate direct interaction with the, um, the space is the subject we're talking about. The Green Influencer Scheme also encourages campaigning. And we have a group called the History Hunters at Norfolk Millennium Library, and they've come up with the idea of creating their own climate emergency newspaper. Um, this, is a, this is an example from a design studio called Fraser Mugridge, who we're working with, who are going to um, print out uh, a thousand copies are going to be distributed to libraries all across the county, including schools. And each page of this newspaper has been designed by the green influencers. There's going to be memes 
loads of memes and they're gonna um next month they're gonna interview people around Norwich Market and see what they think about some of these big issues we did a great activity where we printed off a load of sort of crazy stories that we found on the you know there were like there was a daily mail in there there was uh you know other sort of media outlets and we got their responses to a sort of kids react to concept and um yeah those are those are all going to be packaged um so those are the activities we do and the whole point of the this um of these activities is to connect them with nature but also to find really practical and efficacious ways to respond to the climate emergency and give them the agency that this is an issue that we can all deal with on an individual level and i think also also practically um yeah just as a little aside i think sort of um playing playing games such as simon says and wink murder and pictionary um i would always encourage these as part of the delivery um because i think they they had a sense of um any sort of kinetic movement um will always sort of enrich your um enrich your session and um i think a few of the um i guess uh yeah things i've learned along the way are very similar to nick actually i think collaboration is a really important aspect here is an example of um ben has a has has an expertise in the tree nursery there are tree offices at Bresson hall and having that pool of resource just extends the learning amongst the group and it offers ideas that you might not have thought of yourself so collaboration is really important i think another way that these these um, young people can really benefit is by your enthusiasm and if you're enthusiastic about being outside if you see the great potential of learning outdoors then i think that just rubs off and leaves the impression that this is something of value of significance so enthusiasm i think is a really a big aspect of it um i think patience as well because they don't of course these are youth-led projects but they're not leading on the first session and it's a careful um, measure of scaffolding um to um to get them into that into that uh yeah with that confidence so these 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 projects happen over a long period of time and yeah we slowly build the agency and the confidence for them to um lead these projects because the uh the green influence that we work with are um from disadvantaged backgrounds and um as far as possible underrepresented in green spaces so that also compounds the fact that you need to um really really foster a sense of agency in these places which um which takes time and um yeah those are just our logos this is our um our funding from and structure and um yeah this is a project that's going to be going for the next year and a half um and we intend to work with about 15 more green influencers groups around norfolk and um thanks for listening <laughs>